Boris Johnson halted his Brexit bill yesterday as MPs rejected his plan to pass it in three days. Free English classes with tasty twists. And we have the latest news on the legalisation of gay marriage and abortion in Northern Ireland. Good afternoon and welcome to Keys News. I'm Ellie Double. And I'm Lucy Fieldhouse. Our top story this week is all to do with that word that's been thrown about for the past three years, Brexit. Boris Johnson halted his Brexit bill yesterday as MPs rejected his plan to pass it in three days. Our political correspondent, Oliver Yowd, is here now. Well, yes. Thank you, Ellie. For thrown about is correct. The UK voted to leave the EU in 2016, but as of yet, it hasn't quite decided on what exactly that means. You may remember that Theresa May's premiership ended in tears after she couldn't get Parliament to agree to a deal, or to anything at all for that matter. But Boris Johnson last night got further than many thought possible. The Withdrawal Agreement Bill passed the first reading vote in the House of Commons last night, but bear in mind this is not a specific endorsement. More like saying, OK, let's talk about this and see what happens. I get what you're saying, but it hasn't all been smooth sailing for Boris Johnson, has it? Well, no, not at all. Uh, the, the government had planned to debate, vote on and pass the bill in, by this Friday, which would have only allowed three days to scrutinise the bill in its entirety. For context, the Salmon Act of 1986 made it illegal to handle a salmon in suspicious circumstances, and that took two months to pass. So, with Parliament refusing to abide by Boris Johnson's timetable, the Prime Minister decided to simply pull the plug on the bill for now. So there will be no votes on the bill this week. And we are now left to wait and see whether the EU will grant the UK an extension to the Brexit deadline. You may remember Boris Johnson's talk of no delay, saying that he'd rather die in a ditch than delay Brexit. But he was bound by the Fenn Act passed by Parliament last month to request an extension if Parliament had not agreed a deal by last Saturday. The government had been suggesting in recent weeks that they had found a way to get around the law but it seems as though this had fallen flat, despite the Prime Minister deciding to not sign the extension letter himself. So, where do we go from here? So, right now it's kind of a waiting game. The EU is still mulling over whether to even grant an extension in the first place. Let's not forget that any one of the 27 EU member states can completely veto uh, an extension, which would allow us to crash out on October the 31st with no deal. But from what the government and the opposition are saying, if we are given an extension, it may in fact be time for a general election. But what do the people of Salford think of these recent developments? I went down to find out more. Well, I think that I knew was that the bill was passed, but then they weren't happy with the timetable. Um, <laughs> Brexit's sort of like one of these things now where everyone's got a view on it, everyone's got an idea, but to be honest, the current state of it, it's just a bit messy, isn't it? I think we're in a sort of deadlock situation where nobody can be pleased. Midnight on the 21st of October, in other political news, same-sex marriage and abortion officially became legal in Northern Ireland. It's been 1,010 days since the Stormont Assembly ground to a halt, and since that time, Northern Ireland has been ruled directly from Westminster. A backbench ab amendment was passed in July, which stated that unless the Assembly is back up and running by yesterday, then the laws would be updated in line with the rest of the UK. This move angered the Democratic Unionist Party, who attempted to recall uh, the Assembly in order to protest this. But this was unsuccessful, as members were unable to elect a new Speaker due to the deep political rifts between members. And so, the first same-sex marriage is now set to take place in February 2020, and the government has until the end of March to set up provisions for abortion services in Northern Ireland. LGBT and pro-choice groups are, re are rejoicing at these decisions, whilst there is strong unwaning opposition from others. Now let's take a look at what's in the papers. So in the Daily Mail, we can see that it is mostly about Brexit, you know, because of last night. Uh, trust this lot to turn triumph into disaster. And we also have a bit about Harry and Meghan's aid palace is stoking hysteria. Yeah, The Guardian again is very Brexit central with Parliament put brakes on Johnson's race for Brexit. So, as well as the Metro. 
Uh, still focusing on Brexit again, Boris puts Brexit bill on hold, and we also have a little bit about Meghan dressed in purple. So with this, they also mentioned that Gladiator's 20 years on. We used to like Gladiator in my family. We have one of those massive foam Gladiator hands. I found oh, it the really? other day in my closet. Oh, wow. It's been stated that universities are oblivious to racial abuse on campus. The report carried out by Equality and Human Rights Commission says that 13% of students questioned had experienced racial harassment. Black and Asian students were most likely to report abuse. Jewish and Muslim students were also said that they were targeted. Marcus Smith is at the Salford University Students' Union now. Uh, well, racial harassment is a common occurrence for many students in England, Scotland and Wales. Uh, according to Britain's report, they say that victims of mental health often some even quit altogether. Uh, they're considered things like rac racist name-calling, uh, Insults, physical attacks, uh, racism, the package. Uh, society event. So I spoke to some students earlier on to see what they have. Today, English is one of the most commonly spoken languages in the world. In Salford, it's seen as a huge barrier, as around 30,000 residents were born outside of the UK. One food organisation has recognised this and now offers free English classes for all ethnicities. Laura Burns has more. No matter where you are from, food is something that is loved by the nation. In Salford, it is being used as a way to bring different ethnic communities together. So yeah, we started um, Heart and Parcel for a need to um, address the communication and English skills needed for um, people or different communities in the area because the English language classes that we have currently for the government, that are funded by the government, are not particularly inclusive. The government's rules to qualify for funding means a large percentage of men and women are limited to the opportunity of free English classes. So they kind of have certain restrictions that they um, that they allow on their classes. So you have to be of a certain visa or you have to have, I don't know, be seeking a job. Which is why Heart and Parcel are giving residents of all ages and ethnicities in Salford the chance to learn English in a free and relaxed environment. Hannon has lived in Italy for the past 17 years. However, since moving to the UK, Heart and Parcel has inspired her to improve her English. But I didn't imagine uh, that the English would be like the first language in the world. If not, I will study it before. <laughs> because when I came in Manchester, it's, as, as I said, was my first barrier is the language. Yeah. You know, sometimes you feel very confident and sometimes you feel very shy. One of their classes are held at Marlborough Primary School in Salford, where 70% of their pupils have English as their second language. Head teacher Judith Richens believes Salford needs more opportunities to bring ethnic communities together. I think if families, when they arrive, have got someone to connect to and their children have got people to connect to and they're happy and feel like you know, they're kind of um, involved, then it might be easier to hang on to people. Organisation Heart and Parcel are deciding to cook little parcels to help teach ethnic men and women how to speak English in a fun and interactive way. I communication with people, it is doing how are you, how do you do, it is for me very empty. Edward Glykel from the Czech Republic much prefers using cooking as a way of interactively learning English. If you feel any subject like kitchen, maybe like repair, electrician which one it is for me very pleasant before it is concrete speaking about concrete things because this project in my expert this project give me more 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 help and more motivation and inspiration in the same time a community wanting to conquer language barriers and bring ethnic people together with a tasty twist laura burns salford now we now speak to tom parker who's here with all things sport Yes, thank you, Lucy. Uh, there's been plenty of action on and off the field for the Salford Red Devils this week. Uh, star players Tui Lola here and Jackson Hastings will face off against each other as they were chosen to play for Tonga in Great Britain, respectively.
Uh, Salford head coach Ian Watson will, has also travelled with GB Lions. The team were due to train in Auckland, but a fire struck the city near their base and so they have had to relocate to Hamilton before Saturday's test against Tonga. Red Devils hooker Josh Woods has left the side to join Wakefield Trinity on a two-year contract. The 23-year-old spent six years here in Salford and became a regular in 2018. However, he had a tough last season with him struggling with injury. Wood told the Trinity website he was ready for a fresh challenge. On to the football now. Manchester City won convincingly in the Champions League last night against Italian side Atalanta after a second half blitz gave them a 5-1 win. City actually fell behind in the 28th minute to a penalty after Fernandinho made a rash challenge inside his own box. With the pressure on, they turned the game around with two goals from Sergio Aguero in the 34th and 38th minute, one from a Raheem Sterling cross and then a penalty after Sterling was brought down clumsily. The Englishman continued his fine form in the second half, scoring an 11-minute hat-trick, which sent City on their way to an impressive win. It was an all-perfect as Foden was sent off for a, sec for a second bookable offence and key man Rodri went off with a hamstring injury. However, the win means that they stay top of their group with nine points from a possible nine. Manchester United are also in European action tomorrow evening. They play... Serbian side Partizan Belgrade away from home in the Europa League. After their hard-fought draw against Liverpool, United will be hoping to kick on and gather some momentum after their worst start to his season for 33 years. So a result and performance is crucial for manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Team news show that they still have to contend with six injury issues as six players are currently out, including star player Paul Pogba. Now from the dazzling lights of Europe to the not so fashionable League Two, Salford City picked up their third win from their last five matches last night with a 2-1 victory over Mansfield. Goals from Jake Jervis and joint top scorer Adam Rooney were enough to scrap out the three points. The side have had a mixed start to their first ever professional season to their first ever professional season, but this upturn in form means that they have now moved up to 15th in the table. Salford also found out their opponents for the first round of the prestigious FA Cup this week. They've been drawn against at home to League One side Burton Albion. So, guys, uh, will you be keeping an eye on the football this week? Um, um, I'm not personally a massive football fan, but my sister is, so... Yeah, I probably won't yeah. be. But... And the weather. <laughs> the weather's not too bad at the moment, but obviously that's not going to last very long. Here's Oliver to give you the bad news. Beautiful day here in Media City, but this will not last for long. Just as in Westminster, the clouds are brewing. And this will continue with wet and windy weather all through the weekend. For those going to the Manchester Whiskey Festival, perhaps take an umbrella or a raincoat, anything to keep dry in these autumnal times. That's all from us this week on Keys News. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Keys TV. We'll be back for more news next week. Goodbye. Bye.